Hello everyone, welcome to Astral Doorway, a place where we talk about all things spiritual in the context of astral projection. But what is being spiritual? That is something that every spiritual person needs to ask. Is being spiritual looking a certain way? Is being spiritual about dressing a particular way? Is being spiritual about talking about spiritual topics? Is being spiritual thinking about certain subjects? Is being spiritual about what we do? And the most important question, is being spiritual about identifying with being spiritual? Is it about forming an opinion or thought form about what spirituality is and then gaining a sense of self from a thought form? Is that not what the opposite of what authentic spirituality is all about? About going beyond all thought forms? And so, in this very sense, we actually need to stop being spiritual or quote-unquote spiritual. When we think or are identified as being a spiritual person, what are we doing? We are creating a concept with a particular feeling to add to our sense of self, to add to our identity. Thus, we are becoming more rather than becoming less. And this is the opposite direction of how we get to deeper states of consciousness. Because the deepest states of consciousness are located in the realms of nothingness, the abstract, right? Which exists beyond thoughts, identifications, and any other sort of sense of self. So if you're someone who is perhaps struggling with a sort of spiritual ego... Well, whoever said that learning such and such a thing, such as astral projection, that we should be spiritual? Who said that learning or practicing meditation is spiritual? I know conventionally it is understood that way, but is it really a separate spiritual thing from your normal physical waking life? Why is there a difference between being ordinary and being spiritual? Now, I know that we can say, yes, there is a difference between being quote-unquote normal and being spiritual, but I'm talking on a more profound level of reality here, where all things and all people are equal. So I'm asking, really, why is there a difference? There is not, right? In the highest and most developed perspective, most unified perspective, there is no difference. So many people feel alienated by so-called spiritual people. And for good reason, of course, because they probably encountered some sort of uh, quote-unquote spiritual person that has probably been uh, inauthentically spiritual, right? An inauthentic spiritual person. Uh, I've done this, uh, you probably have, and many others too. You know, there is a sort of fake or inauthentic, new agey kind of spirituality that we have to be careful about. In reality, if you saw any authentic spiritual master on the street, uh, you would never be able to spot them out from the crowd. So one thing we really have to understand is, and what we have to practice, is going beyond spirituality going beyond the spiritual and beyond any sort of teachings, uh, groups, religions, etc. You know, I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm just talking in terms of pure practicality, the pure awakening of our individual consciousness. Now, you know, that might not sound like a lot of fun, right? To put all of our beliefs and knowledge, which we may or may not identify with, You know, like, oh, but I love my religion or spiritual system that I follow and that I'm assigned to, that I'm identified with. 
whether it's a yoga or Gnosticism or any other kind of spiritual thing, uh, it's fine to have those things. But the real awakening of consciousness happens on a level far deeper than being involved in little spiritual teachings here and there. This is something we profoundly have to realize. It happens in the depths of your being, of your higher self, of your soul. All the teachings and everything and listening to gurus, they all point the way, but awakening happens here and now within you. You have to realize that no teaching, system, religion, teacher, guru, uh, YouTube video such as this one can ever awaken your consciousness. Only you can do that. And this can be seen when crowds of people are listening to a particular talk from a spiritual teacher, right? Only a specific percentage of people will understand what the teacher is saying because they're more connected with themselves. The rest of the people are probably seeking externally too much to hear the true teachings that ultimately come from within yourself. It is a recognition of your own being. You know, the word religion and also yoga both originally, uh, literally, translate as to join or to bind or uh, to commune, to connect, to unite, which means, of course, to join or connect with ourselves within. The purpose of any spiritual teaching has never been to seek externally or identify with a particular spiritual group, religion, guru, or anything like that. It's always and always will be to connect with yourself. Not to connect with thoughts that we create that are, you know, separate from ourselves because thoughts are separate, right? But it is to connect with the part of ourselves that has the ability to create those thoughts, to connect with our pure, untainted consciousness that has no labels, has no judgments, has no sort of identification. It is just nothing, right? And you know what? Immense beauty arises from going beyond the spiritual. It is actually the beginning of real beauty. To see life for what it is, rather than through the clouded filter of quote-unquote spiritual thoughts, you cannot really see profound and deeper beauty to all things if you're stuck on the level of identification of being spiritual, or especially being immersed in an elevated idea of yourself, or especially thinking that you're superior to anyone else in any way. This is not real spirituality. An ordinary person who thinks they're superior or better than others in a normal way has ego, right? They're at the grip of the ego. But a spiritual person who thinks they're superior to others in a spiritual way has far more ego than the ordinary person who thinks they're superior, right? <laughs> Trust me. Um, so be very careful. That's why it's said often in some good teachings, the more you awaken, the more responsibility that is required of you. Not so much responsibility because you'll damage people. Yes, you can absolutely damage others with that. However, one way to willingly be more responsible is to realize that if you're not responsible after awakening, then you're also hindering your own progress. And the person who thinks that they're spiritually superior to others will only stay at that level until they gain some kind of clarity and awareness about themselves and the significance of the way that they're being. And so this is all about seeing yourself for what you are, and seeing everything for what is, without the filter of spiritual conditioning, which is tremendously beautiful in practice. 
there's a great freedom in not being identified as a spiritual person, but as just a normal human being. And of course, I only know this because I was once at the grip of a spiritual ego myself. And most of us have gone through it. And you could even say that going through this stage is sort of necessary or a common obstacle, right? You know, I used to have dreadlocks. I couldn't tolerate being around non-spiritual people. Uh, You know, any sign of materialism would annoy me. Uh, But now, you know, I see the spiritual in everything. In the material, I see it in everyone. I can even appreciate the most negative or lost people because I can see the beauty of where they're at spiritually, no matter how much at the grip of the ego they may be. So going beyond ideas of spirituality and integrating this principle in our lives is like connecting with the pure and untouched aspects of ourselves. It's like, for example, find a hill, beach, or a mountain, or any part of nature absolutely untouched by man, without any footpaths or signs or roads, absolutely nothing. You can see, if you're observant enough, that it is untouched by time. And in this sort of area, untouched by time, you can connect with the dimension that is beyond time within yourself. And that goes hand in hand with going beyond all labels of yourself too. Because all labels are just learned things or conditioned things from the past. Definitely check out my video called Rise Above Time to understand the astral realm. And so while in nature, in this timeless realm. You can also go beyond labels of what you see in nature, whether it be a rock or a tree, right? You see it for what it is, which is nothing or nothingness. And there is great beauty in that. There is great beauty in being nothing. And you can see that this dimension that is in nature and that is within ourselves is disconnected from the circus of material life and the hustle and bustle of daily human living, right? All this nonsense of humanity. You see, we are so concerned and focused on the contents and the circus that we create collectively. Uh, But why? Why are we so focused on nothing? If you can see closely enough and objectively enough, you'll realize that All of the content of humanity is no more significant or important than what you see in that part of nature that I just described. And so stories in our minds begin to not seem so important, whether it's world events or anything else. In fact, nature in most cases is more significant than our daily human noise. Yet, we focus on human content more. Why? Why are people so focused on objects, cars, buildings, people? Have you ever looked at the clear night sky as you walk down a road? It doesn't even have to be clear, just complete blackness. Notice it next time you're walking. Notice how everyone else is hypnotized and fascinated with fancy cars, attractive people, shop windows. Uh, Then look back at the vast night sky and ask yourself, what holds more power? All this nonsense that we give so much focus to? Or the immense space and nothingness above it all that allows all of this human form to be and play out. Everything comes from nothing. And so, what is a greater source of power? Things or nothing? Of course, the answer is nothing. So, if you are very quiet and discerning enough, there is a background of beauty and sacredness to be found in this, wherever you are. 
to connect with the untouched and pure dimensions of consciousness that is beyond all forms. If someone calls me spiritual now, you know, in a way, a part of me gets offended. Uh, you know, but really that person in that moment just has a lack of discernment or authenticity because he's labeled me as something. When really I'm just trying to be human because I've realized that all of humanity is not truly human. That we are mechanical and have lost touch with ourselves, our true nature as human beings. So I guess the thing you can take from this is focus on becoming human, not spiritual. And this channel is always in the context of astral projection, right? The astral plane and the significance of it and how it relates to everything. So no matter how abstractly or profoundly I talk, uh, I will always relate it to the astral for you. And so what I'm talking about can also be reflected in our astral projection practices, uh, especially mine. For example, when I first started astral projecting, I went to many places where the content of human movement was such a focus. And back then I was quite identified as a spiritual person, right? Uh, but as I continued on, my experiences in the astral have become more and more in the realms of stillness, uh, in nature, and I've had much more experiences in the mental plane or maybe even beyond, you know, dimensions of fractals, uh, purity, and just joy and beauty. Whereas when I first started, it would always be in Earth-like dimensions. So here's one way to measure your comprehension of what I'm talking about. If you haven't found more joy and peace in seeing yourself for what you are, rather than finding joy in being identified as spiritual, well, then this is something you can go deeper into. And I guarantee this is far more fulfilling and rewarding than any type of spiritual thought. Being identified with a spiritual thought can help us feel empowered. It can help us feel happier or more pleasurable or satisfied to our intellect. But there is a much deeper and more profound and more authentic joy from going beyond that. A true spiritual person, in the most profound sense of spiritual, is one who does not identify as spiritual. They're like anyone else, except they see themselves for who they are, which is nothing at all. Yet that person holds more joy and peace than anyone else through this simple realization. Nobody can attack him because he's not holding onto anything, not holding onto any identifications to defend. He is nothing. How can nothing be offended? How can nothing be attacked? And if you saw this person on a street, you'd never spot them. An enlightened person doesn't stand out from the crowd, you know? Why should they? What would one want to achieve from that? Dressing like a guru or walking like royalty or something? No. Authenticity is a living and breathing movement from moment to moment, which goes far beyond physical appearances. So, be like nature. Be untouched by time. It's always our higher versions of ourselves which much more easily connects to higher dimensions of consciousness, ultimately allowing and enabling ourselves to freely reach other realities such as the astral. Well, thank you. This is Jean, and I will see you on the next episode.